Okay, this is chapter 9 homework for Physics 101. It says air is trapped above liquid ethyl alcohol in a rigid container as shown in this figure. The air above the surface of the, li the above the liquid is 1.1 atmosphere. So I have a pressure up here. I'll call this uh, P naught. It's equal to 1.1 atmospheres. I want to know what is the pressure inside this bubble. So I want to know what is the pressure there. If it's four meters below the surface of the liquid, we know that pressure is equal to P naught plus rho G H. That is, the pressure in this bubble is the pressure due to the weight of this column of liquid above it, plus the pressure that's pushing down onto the surface of the liquid, which is P naught. So P naught is 1.1 atmospheres. That's 1.1 times 10 to the fifth pascals plus the density, the density of ethyl alcohol is 806 kilograms per cubic meter. The densities of liquids will be provided to you on the exam or quizzes. G of course is 9.8 and then times H which is 4 meters, 4.0 meters. That gives me uh, 1.4 times 10 to the fifth pascals which is 1.4 atmospheres. Blaise Pascal duplicated Torricelli's barometer using a red Bordeaux wine of density 984 kilograms per cubic meter. As the working liquid as in this figure, what was the height h of the wine column for normal atmospheric pressure? All right, so that means that I have a pressure here pushing down, and I'll call this P. This is equal to one atmosphere, or one times 10 to the fifth pascals. And then the pressure inside here is my P naught, and it's equal to zero because it's a vacuum. So um, I start with my pressure equation. P is equal to P naught plus rho G H. P naught is zero. And so I, uh, I want to solve for H. H is equal to P divided by rho times G. That's 1 times 10 to the fifth pascals over the density, which is uh, 984 times G. And that gives me the answer, which is 10 meters. So the height of this column is 10 meters at one atmosphere. Just uh, in comparison, the height of a mercury column is 760 millimeters. All right, 700 milli 760 millimeters of mercury, that is, at one atmosphere. So the next question is, would you expect the vacuum above the column to be as good as for mercury? And the answer is, of course, no, because that column is so darn big. A solid wooden cube, 30 centimeters on each edge, can be totally submerged in water. If it is pushed down with a force of 54 newtons, what is the density of the wood? So here's my cube. It is 30 centimeters on edge. The forces acting on it are the force that you push down with it. We'll just call that F. That's that 54 newtons. And the weight of the block. And then the forces acting up on it are the buoyant force. And you're going to submerge this completely underwater with a, a force of 54 newtons. You're pushing down on it with 54 newtons. So some of the forces is equal to zero because the block is not moving. That is FB, the buoyant force, minus FW, minus F is equal to zero. The buoyant force is equal to the density of the water times the volume of the block times the acceleration due to gravity. This is the mass of the block times G, and then F is given, that's equal to zero. Now, further, I don't know the mass of the block right off. So uh, uh, the density of the water, volume of the block, G. The mass of the block is equal to the density of the block times the volume of the block times G minus F is equal to zero. And then I solve this for the density of the block because that's really what I want to know. It's rho W, V, B, G minus F over the volume of the block times G. Now if I just put in my numbers here, the density of water is one times 10 to the third or a thousand 
kilograms per cubic meter. Volume of the block is 0.3 meters. That's cubed. 0.3 times 0.3 times 0.3 times 9.8 minus the force, which is 54 newtons, divided by 0.3 meters cubed times 9.8. Putting in those numbers, I get the density, which is 796 kilograms per cubic meter. Notice that the density of this is less than water. That's good because it floats, and it requires you have to push down in order to submerge it. All right, a liquid flows through two horizontal sections of tubing, join end to end. The first section, the cross-sectional area, is 10 square centimeters. The flow speed is that. The pressure is that. The second section, the cross-sectional area, is 2.5 square centimeters. So it looks like this. I have a, a pipe that gets narrower. All right, this cross-sectional area, I'll call A2, is 2.5 square centimeters. And this cross-sectional area, I'll call A1, is equal to 10 square centimeters. The velocity of the fluid here, V1, is equal to 275 centimeters per second. So the first part, for part A, I just use the continuity equation. A1 V1 equals A2 V2, and I solve for V2. That is, what is the speed here? Now I know right off, if I'm making this skinnier, I'm going to have to increase my speed in order to get the same amount of fluid flowing through as it's flowing through the, the first pipe. So V2 should be bigger than V1. I'll find that to be true. Solve for V2, A1 V1 over A2, that is uh, 10 times 275 divided by A2, which is 2.5, and that's equal to 1100 centimeters per second. So my V2 is quite a bit bigger. Now, for part B, I want to know the pressure in the second pipe. I use Bernoulli's equation, which is P1 plus rho GH1 plus one half rho V1 squared. And then that's equal, that's a constant value because this comes from the conservation of energy. This is really just a, a measure of the, uh, the volume rate of energy. Uh, P2 plus rho GH2 plus one half rho v2 squared. Now the height doesn't change. h1 and h2 are equal so they cancel out. I want to solve for p2. So p2 is equal to p1 rho v1 squared minus one half rho v2 squared. Putting in my values here, uh, you should also realize that at this point, even though I kept non-SI units in part A, at this point I have to convert everything back to SI units because the pressure is measured in pascals and pascals and SI unit. So to make your units match up, all the other units have to be in, in uh, SI units. So that means that uh, my density needs to be changed. It was 1.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Convert this, there are 10 to the third grams in one kilogram and 100 centimeters in one meter. Cube that and it gives me uh, 1650 kilograms per cubic meter. And then uh, likewise, I need to convert my speeds. Uh, the first was 275 centimeters per second. I just moved my decimal place over twice, so it's 2.75 meters per second and then V2 is 11 meters per second. All right, so I can put in my values here. P1 is 1.2 times 10 to the fifth pascals plus one half of my density, which is 1650 kilograms per cubic meter times V1 squared, which is 2.75 meters per second squared minus one half of 1650. I'm gonna leave the units off times 11 squared, all right? And that is equal then, it's 1.2 times 10 to the fifth, 
plus 6239 minus 99830. That's equal to 26400 pascals. So your pressure drops when you go into the second pipe because the speed has increased. When V goes up, the pressure goes down. The rectangular boat is four meters long and one meter wide. It has a mass of 120 kilograms. To what depth is the boat submerged? That is, where is its water line? All right, so I have this boat, it's rectangular. I wanna know what is this depth? I'll call it D. All right, I have two forces acting on it. I have the buoyant force acting on the boat and then I have the weight of the boat. And we know that because it's floating, that FB is equal to FW, or FB minus FW is equal to zero. The buoyant force is equal to the density of the water, that is the volume of the boat, that's the mass of the displaced water, times G gives us its weight, minus the mass of the boat, times G, is equal to zero. I'm gonna solve this for the volume of the boat. Uh, see, the G's cancel. So the volume of the boat is equal to the mass of the boat over the density of the water. Now, uh, that's not entirely true. This is the volume of the boat that is submerged. All right, so not all of the boat is submerged, fortunately. All right, so it's the submerged portion of the volume of the boat, and that's equal to 120 kilograms over the density of water, which is 1,000. And that gives me 0.12 cubic meters. So 0.12 cubic meters of this boat is submerged and when it floats. Now I want to figure out, I want to translate that into a depth. Now the volume is equal to the area times the depth. Alright, so I want to solve for the depth. I'm just going to say D is equal to V over A. Uh, v is point one two cubic meters the area is uh, four meters by one meter so that's four square meters and that's equal to point zero three meters or three centimeters so this distance is point zero three meters a piston of cross-sectional area A is used in a hydraulic press to exert a small force of magnitude F on the enclosed liquid Connecting pipe leads to a larger piston of cross-sectional capital A. And because the piston's diameters, what force will balance a 20 kilonewton force on the large piston? So I know that the pressure here, I'll call it P1, is equal to the pressure here. That's Pascal's principle. P1 is equal to P2. P1 is little f over little a, and that's equal to big F over big A. So I just want to solve for little f. Put in my numbers, 20 kilonewtons. Not gonna worry about converting it right now. The area is pi times the diameter over two squared. This is the diameter of little a. Pi big A over two. The diameter of the larger piston, which I'll call D sub A that squared. Now my pi's cancel, my two squareds cancel, and I'm just left with dA over dA squared. And so that's uh, 20 kilonewtons. Let's see, d little a, that is a 3.8 centimeters squared over 53 centimeters squared put that in. Notice that the centimeters squared cancel. Leave me with units of kilonewtons. 0 0.1 kilonewtons, which by the way is about 100 newtons, about 10 pounds or so. I don't know, more than that. Um, about 20 pounds. For safety and climbing, a mountaineer uses a nylon rope that is 50 meters long and 1 centimeter in diameter. The diameter is one centimeter, that's 0 0.01 meters. Uh, when supporting a 90 kilogram climber, the rope elongates, that's delta L, by 1.6 meters. It stretches by a me almost meter and a half, 
when this you know, fairly big guy hangs from the rope. I want to find out what is the Young's modulus equal to. Know that the pressure, that is force over A, is equal to uh, the Young's modulus times delta L over L, the ratio of how much it stretches to how long it is. So we just solve this for Y. Uh, my force is going to be uh, the weight of the climber. That's 90 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared divided by my area, which is uh, pi times d over 2. d is 0 0.01 meters over 2 squared. L is 50, 1.6 meters. And then that's equal to uh, 3.5 times 10 to the 8th newtons per square meter. So that's the Young's modulus for this particular rope.